Hi, this is Jeff from S4i Systems. I'd like to talk about how to create IBMI objects from RDI using Better Object Builder, or Bob. Okay, so here is IBM's rational developer for I. You probably use it, it's the code editor that uh, I think most of us use unless we're using a green screen. And um, you're probably used to keeping all your source code on the I in source physical file members and either creating them with commands like create RPG mod or maybe you have some type of uh, change management tool so you take a, a menu option or command or something in it and it builds it for you. Well, with Bob, we do it a little bit differently. The, in this case, the IBM I is really just used as a build system. And of course, we're running your programs once everything's built. But the source code is kept on your local PC. And instead of being in source physical file members, of course, they are just in standard text files. And so the, the workflow is you can keep your source code uh, for version control in something like Git. We use Git here. Um, and that's how you can manage your versions and do merges from, to incorporate changes from other developers and stuff like that. And then whenever you want to build, you send the code to the I into the, a directory in the IFS and you tell Bob to build it into a library. And so that's what we're going to do now. So, okay, we need some source code to, uh, to build. Well, Bob actually ships with a sample project and here, if you look in a, and this is my computer here, directory source, I have a directory Bob, that's the same folder that you would get from GitHub. And inside it is a sample project. And the sample project has some source code for a command, a physical file, a logical file, and an RPG. So we want to define that to RDI. Now, we don't do it through the remote system explorer, which is what we usually do when we're working with source code. We use the Project Explorer view because the code is local to our computer. Okay, so let's create a project. I'll just right click in this blank area and choose New Project. I just want a general project. I'll give it a name and we'll browse for the location. So it's here. And the way I got it there, I just did a git clone of uh, the Bob project into my uh, source, you know, development directory. Okay, that looks good. Click finish. There, I now have a project called Bob test contains these items. Uh, just as an example, if I try to open up this RPG source code, yep, there it is just standard source code. Okay, so now we have the code defined to the I. Now what do we want to do? Well, we want to we want to build it on the I, right? And so the first thing we do is we have to tell Bob where all these activities are going to take place. And the way you do that is with a build settings file. And you can see it here because I've already set this up. This, this file exists. And why don't we go in there now? Okay, so up here in the toolbar is a menu item. It's the external tools uh, toolbar button. And that's where all the Bob integrations into RDI exist. And these are basically just a set of scripts that get called by RDI to do things. And one of the things that it does is it, it takes all your source code and it pushes it down to a directory on the I. Another is it kicks off a uh, better object builder build that kind of thing. So two ways to access these options. One is to go to the Run menu, choose External Tools, and choose the one you want. Another way is to use the toolbar icon here. So I'll do that. OK. So we want to edit our build settings. So we choose this one, Edit Build Settings. And it opens up in a text editor here. There's some settings to fill out. I've already filled them out because I've been using this for a while. But, you know, basically, here's the name of the IBM I 
that we're going to be working with, my user profile, what directory are we going to push the source code to? Well, I created a directory called slash build and bob test. And right now there's nothing in it. What library is going to, uh, our object's going to be compiled into? Well, I'm not library bob test. Display my bob test. It exists, but it's empty. Okay. And uh, the name of the make file, you can call it whatever you want. Standard is make file, so we'll use that. And this is the location of the SSH key that I set up. This is how we're uh, securely connecting to the I. We're using OpenSSH, and there's an OpenSSH server installed on the I. So this is just the location of my private key. OK, let's get out of here. So the first thing I want to do is push the code to the I so that we can build it. And we'll just go up here and say push to IBM I. And it thinks about it for a second, and then it sends everything over. There it is. So according to this, it's there. Let's see if it's truly there. Yes, OK. Well, the next thing we want to do is compile it. OK, well, how do we do that? Well, we already have a make file here, which sets out uh, the list of objects to build. Here's the objects to build, right? These match the ones in the source code. Here's the command, the module, program, etc. And it, and this d d tells it uh, how to build it. So the, the physical file here is going to be built from this source code. Right? The module here is going to be built from this source code, and it uses the file object. Does it use the file object? Let's make sure. Whoops, that's OK. Um, yep, there it is. It uses testo1a and testo1a. Great, OK, that looks good. Let's kick off a build. We'll go back to our external tools menu, and we'll choose build all. OK. All right, it says build successful. What do we have here? Uh, created, created the physical file, logical file. Looks like it created all the objects. Let's verify that. Yep, there they are. OK. Now, um, any time that Bob creates a build, it saves all the spool file outputs from the compile. So the, all the compile listings are saved in a directory called logs in your project folder. And if you look over here, remember, it, this was just the source code in the directory. But now, after we've done a build, if we display it again, we now have a logs directory. So that's where it, that's where it gets created. And then the RDI integration tools, um, when you build from RDI, it transfers the logs back to your local computer. And so you can look at them through RDI. So if I go here and refresh this logs directory, I see there's a directory of the date and time that I did the build. I can expand that. And I see compile listings for all the items that I compiled. Let's check one out. Yeah, OK, just a standard uh, compile listing. Looks good. No errors. They built. And this here, this build log dot log, uh, that is basically just a listing of the stuff that appears in the console window down here. So if we open that, we'll see the same items. It tells you what command it used. Remember, Better Object Builder uses make, which is an IBM, sorry, which is a Linux and Unix tool for building objects. We use GNU make. And so it tells us this is the command that is actually issuing right here. Make all, then it specifies uh, what library should be used to compile the objects. 
and then it specifies the name of the make file. All right. Well, that's that's how you do that. Now, what if uh, what if some objects changed? What if we do another build, and we haven't even changed anything? What's going to happen? Well, let's check it out. I'll do another build all. Okay. I'm glad this happened. This is going to happen sometimes. This is sort of a byproduct of using Eclipse. These are external tools and they will operate on a project. But it needs to know which project it should operate on. Well, I have two projects here. I have Bob Test and I have Express XP. So which, which one should the tool operate on? Well, it operates on the one that's selected, the one that has focus. And right now nothing does because I clicked away and I was clicking in other panes. So I have to come back here and click on something in this project and then I can uh, access my external tool. We're working on a way to, to get around that, but right now that's, that's just how it is. So we'll do another build. I haven't changed any code and let's see what happens. Okay, the build started. It looks like it didn't do anything. And that's correct. It doesn't need to build anything that doesn't need to be built. Well, let's, uh, let's change some code. Let's edit the logical file. Remember, this is source code that's stored on my, on my PC, on my Mac here. I'm going to change this to uh, last. That's a different field in the file. We'll, we'll change the key there. And I save it. And now I want to push the changes to the eye and then do a build. I can do that with one button. I'll just choose this one here push to IBM I and build all. Okay, there we go, build successful. What happened? Uh, it pushed just the single file that changed to the I, and then it built the logical file, which makes sense, and then it knows that the RPG module uses it, so it recreated that, and it knows that the program uses the module, so it recreated that. Okay, and um, I th and then of course there's the logs up here, and you know it has a log of everything it did. Okay, well, what if we have a compile error? That happens from time to time. Well, let's see. I'll change the source code, and I'll I'll change this field to something that doesn't exist, and we'll do the same thing. We'll just push this button here, which is push to IBMI and build all. Let's see what happens. Okay, the push went fine, but the compile failed. We get some uh, some various errors that get sent back. And if we expand it and take a look at the, the log, we see, sure enough, oh, look at that. It has a problem with that field. No problem. I can fix that. Here, we'll save it. And do my push and build again. There we go. Build successful. Okay, well that's how you do a build from RDI using Better Object Builder with the integration pieces installed into RDI. Thanks for watching.